Hey guys, and welcome back to my Making Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe in Minecraft series. Last episode, I covered making combinational logic for the output display. In this video, I plan on building the combinational logic. I had quite a few people ask me why I made the inputs the way I did, since the display could be wired with about half the inputs I'm using. I think now would be a good time to describe the architecture of the circuitry that will actually drive the display. The display is going to be hooked up directly to the data storage array, which holds all the data for the current game state. The array will hold the data in the exact way I've designed the board to accept the inputs. Two bits will be reserved for each piece, and two bits for each local board. This design is easy to read and write to, since there's a clear separation between every pixel and every local board. That's why the display is really complicated, as I wanted it to be super easy to interface with the data storage array. I am absolutely certain there's a far better way to implement everything I'm creating, but this is just the way I thought of it, and I'm really just trying to figure this out anyways. Last video, I created this spreadsheet with 81 formulas that describe the logic that I'll need to create. I'm going to show you how I'm creating the logic for just a few of these systems, though. I'm going to start with building the logic for P7. I could have chosen any piece to start with, but I wanted to build everything from the bottom up, and since P7 is on the bottom row, I just chose that one. Similarly, I'm going to start with Pixel 7 since it's on the bottom row of the piece. The logic expression we developed for this was A or B or C or D. We got off easy with this expression as it only requires one four-way OR gate. To build this, I'll put four stone blocks down and label them with A, B, C, and D to show that those are the inputs. Now it's time to place a circuitry to OR them together. In my second episode, we covered how to make different logic gates, and I showed how to make a two-input OR gate. Well, I hinted that we could expand it to as many inputs as we wanted. To do that, every input needs to be buffered. This prevents backfeeding from one signal into another, which can be problematic to say the least. One of my commenters pointed out that I could use slabs to create zero tick buffers, since signals can only travel up a slab and not back down. Now this is way better than repeaters, which require a single redstone tick of delay. Now a redstone tick is only a few milliseconds, but it's important to minimize delay as much as possible, because hundreds of unoptimized gates will add up. All of the outputs of the slab buffers need to be connected together, and really that's it. I have a series of flip-flops that are creating every state that could go into this system, and you say that only when all of the signals are off, the input is off. This is what we want, since when any of the inputs are on, the output should be on. That was a particularly easy system though, and it gets a bit harder to create the next few. Let's create Pixel 8 system. This might seem odd, but I'm going to build the next system to the left of the last one, even though the next pixel is on the right. This is because from the front, if we want the system to appear on the right, it needs to be on the left looking from the back, as you see here. Okay, the expression for this pixel is not A and C, or A and not B. Let's start with this first bit. We can make an AND gate like this, and label our inputs as A prime and C. Now let's look at this bit. We can create another AND gate, and label our input as A and B prime. The last step is the OR them together, since if this OR that is true, this pixel should turn on. We can use a simple OR gate to accomplish this. In fact, we wouldn't even need to worry about backfeeding since the outputs of the torches won't get affected by it. This gives us our final design for the gate. I wanted to cover one more pixel in this piece. This will be the last pixel on the bottom, or pixel 9. The expression for this is probably the hardest one I have. If not A and C X or D, or A and not B, turn the pixel on. This is a bit less clear as to where to start, but I'm going to pick the XOR expression, since it relies on nothing but the signals that are raw inputs. We created this XOR gate in the last episode, but one of my awesome viewers showed me an alternative design for an XOR gate that I think is worth mentioning. This was the design that was brought to my attention. Basically, it's shorter by a block and has one tick of additional delay. You can see how when both inputs are off, the redstone torch on top turns off both redstone torches below, which turns off the output. If either input is turned on, then the middle redstone here also turns on, since it gets powered by an adjacent block. This powers the block that the central redstone torch is on, which turns off that torch. The active input then powers its redstone line, which turns off one torch. This means that the other side isn't getting powered, so its torch stays on. This torch then powers the output. If both inputs are on though, then both redstone lines get powered, which turns off both torches, depowering the output. This design is nice in that it's a block shorter than mine, but it does have an extra redstone ticket delay, due to these repeaters. Because I'm trying to minimize delay as much as possible, I'm going to be using my design, but I thought this new one was definitely worth mentioning. Here's my C XOR D expression here. Next up is the AND between the XOR and NOT A. We can just use the output of the XOR as one input, and NOT A as the other input to this AND gate. Now we have the A AND NOT B. I'll just use another AND gate and add A AND NOT B as inputs. Now we need to OR these expressions together, and we don't have to worry about backfeeding since they're going straight into torches, so we can just connect them right together. Alright, now we have the three pixels done. Here I finished all of the gates for the pixel, and I'll do a quick demo with the input lines up here. 
So with all the lines off, we've said that nothing should be displayed and test seems to be happening. So with just D on, we should see an X. With just C on, we should just see an O. With C and D on, it's an invalid state. The pixel can do whatever it wants since the computer will literally never ask for this state. The same is true if B is on and A is off. So the next four states are all invalid. With A on, we're looking at part of the picture for an O on the local board. Since when A is on, it effectively disables the C and D inputs, we really only have one more important state to look at. When A and B are on, we get this, which is part of the picture for an X on the global board. If it wasn't clear already, this design is not gonna work. I mean, it functions, but it's just impractical. The circuitry for one piece takes up an entire board's worth of space, which is just kind of crazy. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my experimentation with a new display system. Also, I just launched a Patreon. I'll have it in the description below. So if you guys want to support me, you can also get content early for like $3. So yeah, you can do that. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time.